in terms of um, getting funder ready, um, we spend a lot of time um, talking to both entrepreneurs and funders um, at Investor Connected and with support services um, like um, lawyers, accountants, and also uh, local authorities. Um, and so we, we have an idea of how the ecosystem works um, and, and, and how the conversations between um, entrepreneurs and, and funders work best. Um, and so we've spent a lot of time um, analyzing businesses, um, speaking with uh, investors, speaking with uh, lenders, et cetera, to try and understand how um, um, how the communication between the two those two uh, parties can be better facilitated. Um, and in terms of who we are and what we do, we're both a technology platform and a consultancy. Um, so our website, investorconnected.com, has business planning and pitching tools. We also help with financial projection and analysis and valuation. Um, and we also do um, do deal flow uh, and due diligence management for investors and, and, and lenders as well. Uh, and on the consultancy side of things, um, we also work um, with companies to get them funder ready. Uh, and so what we're going to be talking about today is, is, is somewhat about our process that we go through. Um, we also help people get um, um, with their with uh, getting tax efficient um, through uh, the SEIS and EIS service. And I'll speak a little bit about that later. Um, and normally when things are a little bit less um, pandemic-y, we run events and seminars as well and networking events in person as well. So uh, I'm sure we'll be running uh, some of those in the in the near future. Um, so we're talking today ab about um, getting funder ready. And, and the first thing that I want to, to mention is, is the perspective with which one should approach uh, getting funding. We meet businesses all the time that are looking, um, looking for funding. A lot of the time it's equity funding, but um, uh, people are looking for loans now, a lot of loans as well and, and, and other kind of debt finance. Um, but often when we speak to people, there is a lack of understanding of the other side of the equation um, of what funders are looking for. And so the first thing that is um, the, that is worth noting is 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 trying to understand where um, in, uh, funders are coming from, um, whether it's an investor or, or a lender. Um, and, and, and it's important to understand that they're looking for investable businesses. They're looking for businesses that have certain characteristics um, that and criteria that they that they that they have um, in order to make the decision to lend to lend money um, or, or, or invest money. And so when looking at that, um, they look at your business as an investable opportunity. So they may like what you do. Um, they may be really enthused by your story and you as entrepreneurs, but ultimately it is about the investability of the opportunity that your business is providing to them. And they may look at things, depending upon the type of funding, they may look at your business in two slightly different, um, from two slightly different perspectives. Um, investors, so those that are investing in equity uh, mainly, are looking to generate a return on their investment. Um, and they usually want that as large and as quickly as possible, um, because ultimately, when it comes to equity, there's only two ways that um, an investor will make make money from an investment, um, either through an exit, i.e. a sale of your business to 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 a third party or through a listing um, or through dividends. Right. The regular payment of um, profits to uh, to them over the course of time. So. That's what that's the way in which they're looking at your business and they're scrutinizing your business. So whilst they might be really enthused by um, what you might be doing, it's really to them about the opportunity for generating that return and how that looks. Lenders look at things from a slightly different perspective. Whilst they, too, will be interested in what you're doing, um, they are more interested in that regular stream of income. Um, that you provide. So if you're if you're if you're borrowing money or or you've got a bond um, or, or some kind of preference share, that will require a regular stream of income, a regular stream of payments that you have to pay, um, whether that be interest only or interest plus capital over over time. So when they look at your business, they want to see whether you have the ability to support that that lending as to support those payments on a regular basis. 
Um, and in addition to that, if everything goes wrong, um, do you do do you have any security, any collateral that they can um, that they can rely on um, in order to make a claim against if or if everything goes wrong? So it's it's a slightly different way of looking at it, but it's important to keep that in mind because when you're pitching to investors when you're or, or lenders when you're trying to get funding it's really important to to take things from their perspective and therefore um create um documentation and prepare yourself to answer the kinds of questions that they're going to by necessity have um and so you know the first point for you to take away is keep funders perspectives in mind Whenever you're presenting information, it is really, really important to make sure that you have that investor or funder perspective. Um, and so that's one of the key things that, that, that is worthwhile taking away from uh, this, this particular talk. So now, in terms of what do you need to prepare and how do you go about engaging with, in, um, with funders, um, we at Investor Connected have put together what we call our, our nine step program, which is which we formed into uh, our, what we call our fund the readiness pyramid and our framework. Um, and these are the nine things that we see as being common, um, common processes that people that, that businesses have to go through in order to significantly increase their chances of um, of raising funds. Um, and we work with a lot of clients um, and we've seen on many, many occasions that those people that are prepared, those people that have the necessary information and have constructed their narrative in a way that is attractive um, to whatever funder they're approaching, have far more success, um, far more success at, uh, at getting funding at the end of the day. Um, and so it's really important to um, to go through these steps, um, and and there's a lot of there's a lot of kind of shortcuts that you you'll see out there, um, but most of those in 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 ninety percent of the cases don't work. Um, when it comes to when it comes to getting funding, it's an extremely competitive environment, and therefore you need to stand out from the uh, from from other people. And the way to do that is by ensuring that you can. Um, present your business effectively, answer the questions that um, funders need answered, um, and do so in, 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 in an interesting um, um, and, uh, and uh, attractive way. So what are the nine steps? Um, and let's, let's go through them in, in order. Um, and we, we, we put them in a pyramid because we believe that, that there are foundational aspects that you need to, to look at. The first being your business plan, then financial projections, because you need to be able to um, explain things financially. Um, your legal your legal framework, all of those things we call foundation foundational. You need to have those really sorted out right at the beginning before moving on. Um, then after that, you need some kind of, you probably need some kind of valuation analysis. Valuation definitely if you're going for equity finance, but analysis, especially if you're looking at um, any kind of um, um, debt type finance. Uh, tax incentives are very uh, are, are very useful, especially on the equity side of things, um, and marketing and PR, all of which um, are very important to make sure that you can um, explain who you are to the public and have a public presence. That's extremely important. All of these things feed into um, pitch decks and, and investor videos that you may use to um, to attract um, uh, to present your your, your case to um, to to funders and and then finally it's obviously having a, a network and engaging with those funders and investors so um, that in brief is 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 the framework so now we're going to briefly um, go through um, each of those steps and and give you some ideas about what each of those steps contain. Um, obviously, we've only got 30 minutes, so we can't go into a massive amount of detail, but hopefully it'll give you some uh, some ideas as to what we mean by uh, at each step. So the first thing to mention um, is business planning. So, so what do you need to have in a business plan? Now, this isn't something um, that we're talking about from um, you know, some kind of MBA program. We're not talking about an internal business plan. We're talking about an investment-focused business plan. 
Um, and, and that means that it needs to be directed at the kind of things that investors will and lenders will want to see. So they want to understand a little bit about the mechanics of your business. So what kind of problem are you trying to solve with your business? Every business um, at, at the heart of it is trying to is trying to fill a need, is trying to 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 solve a particular problem. Um, and then describing uh, in, in a concise and, and accurate fashion as to how your business solves that problem. Um, we like to call that a, an, an equa the equation. So you've got a balance on that side of things. And it's really a good idea to make sure that the problem that you're outlining and how you describe the solution both mirror each other. Um, the third thing that, that um, investors especially, equity investors especially, are um, extremely interested in is, is the market size. Um, what is the size of the market that you're playing in? Um, who are your target clients? And what kind of traction you have? Uh, lenders will also want to understand that as well in terms of the sustainability of your business and whether it's um, it, it, it has um, future growth potential. Um, and so making sure that you can um, accurately identify what your market is um, and, and you, you, can, you can define who your targets are, um, that's really, really important, especially at an early stage, um, um, you know, to, to be very clear about those kind of things. Um, the next thing that, that is worth that, that people will want to know, investors and lenders will want to know, is your sales and marketing strategy. So how are you going to be attracting your clients? Um, and, and, you know, what what channels are you going to be using? Um, what, what is your plan? Uh, some people call this go to market strategy as well. Um, but it's 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 all about engagement with clients and how you're going to be um, raising your awareness um, and converting awareness into actual sales um, next thing is business is your business model so being able to clearly um, identify or and articulate what it is your business does or, or your business or how it is your business makes money what are the commercials of your business um, so what are the unit economics of your business how much how much do you charge on average for whatever product or service that you do what is the average cost um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, these are these are really crucial things in making sure that, you know, and can articulate um, the, the unit economics of your business is something that's extremely, extremely important. Uh, and finally, what is your funding target? How much are you looking to raise? Um, why? And, and what are you going to use that that those funds for? And not just in a high level sense, um, in, investors and lenders will want to know in a much more detailed sense what it is and how you're going to use the funds and what is your plan and where is it going to take you um, uh, take you to. Uh, so so making sure that you have clarity around that is really important. And ultimately, when it comes to business plans, it's all about creating a narrative. It's all about taking funders on a journey from where you are today uh, to a believable destination in the future. Um, and that means that you have to articulate, um, you know, clearly your your process and how you are going to be uh, growing your business um, on into the future. Um, if it's a, if you're if you're talking about a loan, um, at least to the conclusion of, um, of 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 the term of the loan, um, and when it comes to equity, to to a point where um, the the investor will be able to make a return on their investment. Able to describe that. Um, so moving on, that was the first fundamental pillar. The second fundamental pillar is uh, financial projections. So a lot of people balk when it comes to finances and they, um, uh, they, they get a little bit concerned that they don't know, um, they're not an accountant and they don't understand um, numbers very well. But it's really, really important for any kind of financier, any kind of in investor or lender to know that you know your business in, in numerical terms. And when it comes to financial projections, the way to think about it is it's all about describing your business in numerical terms. And therefore, it should reflect what you say in your business plan. And it's simply a numerical reflection of what you've put together in your business plan. Now, when we speak to clients about um, putting together financial projections, we always get them to start by looking at what we call their growth drivers. So the types of things that will that the, are the kind of core fundamental parts of their business, whether that be how many customers they're going to have, 
how many visitors they may have to a website, um, how how they're going to be converting those visitors, um, what you know, what the attrition rate of their clientele is, um, if they're working um, in a marketplace where they're dealing with with both suppliers and buyers, how are they? How do those two dynamics work? Um, so really identifying those kind of core drivers of what a business um, what what a business relies on um, so that you're able to explain to somebody who's interested in your business how those growth drivers will work um, and, 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 and how how that is going to develop over time. So that's where we often spend a lot of time with our with with, with our clients, getting them to 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 try and accurately as accurately as they can project what those look like and tell a story that, that, that aligns itself with the business plan. Um, the other thing that you need to make sure that you kind of you understand is is how much it's going to cost to produce the products or services um, that you're that, that you're talking about. Um, that your business operates under. So understanding the unit economics, the cost, the unit costs um, of uh, of your of your products and services, um, and those are the variable costs. So those those will change and and vary dependent upon um, your 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 growth drivers or, on your underlying customers. So making sure that you understand those variable costs is really really important. Um, and, and finally, when it comes to financial projections, it's also about um, um, understanding the costs for things like staff equipment office space whether you're renting or buying um, technology um, so if you've got a website you may have servers and things that you need to pay for or or, or programs etc all of these things are fixed costs which are going to be regular recurring payments or maybe one-off payments um, that you need to make but need to be um, need to be covered um, in your in your projections and and these projections are very useful as a plan because when it comes to finance and funding, um, an investor or a lender needs to be sure that you know what you're going to do with the money and that and that you've projected at, as accurately as you can what those costs are going to look like, um, so that you're you have enough money to achieve what you say you're going to you're going to achieve, um, or that you're not actually taking on too much. So um, it's really important to be as realistic as possible, especially on the cost side of things, um, to make sure that that you're able to um, cover all of those all of those um, aspects. Um, and please be aware that all too often we see a, a massive disconnect between what the financials say and what the business plan suggests. And so making sure that you have um, that that linkage um, between what your financials describe um, and what your business plan describes is really, really important. Next, so legal framework. Um, making sure that your business is ready to ex uh, accept funding is, from a legal perspective, is hugely important. Um, we see so many instances where companies go into a funding round and don't have um, the correct um, legal foundation to enable investment. So whether that being um, their corporate constitution, um, so things like their articles of association, shareholder agreement being way too complicated, having share classes which have rights um, which disenfranchise um, other shareholders, which they're trying to which they're trying to attract. Um, where there is control mechanisms which make it much more difficult for investors to have any kind of say in what's going on. Um, those are all things which one needs to consider very carefully uh, when moving into a funding round and, and making sure that you have, um, you know, a corporate constitution which is appropriate for, um, for, for uh, investors and lenders is extremely important especially when it comes to things like collateral, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's really important to make sure that your legal framework is, is, very, um, is very well put together uh, and appropriate for, for what you're trying to do. Um, uh, something that we also find quite often is, is, is you need to ensure that, that what you say your corporate framework is and your corporate constitution is um, and your shareholdings are, is also reflected in official filings at company's house. Um, 
we often I, I have conversations with clients all the time where they say, well, you know, the shareholding of my business is X, Y, Z. Um, we go on companies house to double check and we see a completely different structure. Um, investors, lenders will all make uh, will all do the same checks. And therefore, it's really important to ensure that when you are going through funding, that you have your house in order and that everything is filed correctly. Um, and, 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 and what you're saying to investors and lenders is reflected in the uh, in the official records. So making sure that you do that is really important. Um, also, if you're talking about lending and you have any collateral that you may need to use for loans, you probably should consult a profit. Um, that's something that you need to make sure you have all the paperwork for. Uh, last but not least, that if you're not sure, um, you generally it's really good advice to, to consult a legal professional to make sure that um, everything is in order when you're when you're going uh, for a funding round. Um, step four, valuation analysis. So once you've got everything, everything sorted, it's really important to um, understand the value of your business and, 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 and do some analysis. Um, as well. Uh, and, and really, this breaks down into both equity and debt, the debt side of things. Uh, on the equity side of things, um, you definitely need a valuation um, if you're going to raise equity. Um, that valuation is important because um, the, that's the price that an investor will have to pay. Uh, and it needs to it needs to be realistic. It needs to be defendable. Um, it needs to be in line with what the market is um, is seeing and also the risk of your business and the stage of development of your business. So making sure that you have a, a valuation which is defensible is is super important for equity finance. Um, when it comes to debt, things are slightly different. Obviously, you don't you don't need a valuation. But what it is worth doing is 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 analyzing your financials and ensuring that your business can maintain any kind of the debt repayments that you're talking about. Right. Any in, any um, debt investor will look at that themselves. So making sure that you've constructed that you've also done your due diligence and you've looked at your um, and analyzed your financials to make sure that you have the affordability for that particular um, um, debt financing is extremely important. Um, so uh, obviously, if you're if you're going for things like working capital loans, um, that's slightly different. Your credit worthiness will be looked at just from purely from a credit check. Uh, but if you're and, and also your 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 kind of income cash flow um, of your bank accounts. But if you're talking about any long term finance, they will definitely want to see um, whether you have the capacity uh, based on your projections to to um, maintain that that particular um, level of debt. Moving on. So tax incentives and efficiency. Um, Tax structuring is so important um, nowadays when it comes to, to, to fundraising, especially on the equity side of things. Um, if you are looking for equity, um, equity finance, um, making trying to take advantage of the seed enterprise investment scheme um, and uh, the enterprise investment scheme, which are both schemes run by um, um, HMRC. It's really, really important um, to, to take advantage of those if you can, because what it does is it gives um, either a 50 or 30 percent tax break to um, an equity investor in your business, which basically means that it dramatically reduces the risk of, 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 of your business. In effect, what it means is that that your your the, an investment in your business could lose 50 percent and they would still not they'd still be whole. Right. So it just takes it takes a lot of um, risk out of an investment. Uh, so if you can take advantage of those things, it's really worth doing so. It's also worth looking at things um, such as the um, R&D tax credit scheme by um, um, HMRC as well. Um, and, and, you know, those types of things can dramatically improve um, your 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 investability. So things like R&D tax credits means that you can maybe get some um, a tax rebate, um, which might reduce the amount that you have to raise. Um, and also, it, by doing these things, it shows an investor or a lender that you are knowledgeable about this, uh, about this, this uh, running a business, and that you're able to take advantage of um, those those things, those types of things, which is which is great in, in terms of your um, standing as a as an as an entrepreneur. Um, number six is marketing and PR. So. Making in terms of marketing and PR, when you're fundraising, visibility is key, right? 
um, ensuring that you have a good presence um, is even more so important nowadays. Um, investors, lenders, funders, they will all try and look at you um, on your online presence. They'll, they'll, they'll Google search you. Um, they'll, they'll look at your website. Um, they'll look at your social media. Um, they'll try and see if there's any reviews on your business, um, anything that's been said on your business, etc. So making sure that you know what your online presence is and that you curate that is extremely important. Um, if you're going to use things like crowdfunding platforms or angel investor networks um, where you don't necessarily get to see the investors face to face, um, good PR and communication is hugely important during the funding process and spending some money um, and time on, 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 on creating a buzz can be can be critical to your success of, 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 of raising funding through those types of channels. Um, also, it's really, really useful in showing the traction of your business. If you can show how uh, that, that people engage with you and interact with you and how they do so, um, it, it's really um, confirmation for, for funders that, that what you're doing is, um, is working well uh, for your client base. Um, number seven uh, is, 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 pitch, is putting together your pitch deck. Now, this is where a lot of people start, actually. They start to just put together a pitch deck. And our view is that all of the things in terms of step one to six are things that you should do before you put your pitch deck together and that your pitch deck should be an aggregation of all of the things that you've done before, right? Um, and it's a graphical representation of your business plan, your strategy, your finances, et cetera, okay? Um, and and if you if you've done those things in steps one to six correctly, it will be so much easier to put together a really good quality pitch deck. Um, the thing that's really important also is to make sure that your pitch deck is correctly aimed at your target audience. Whether it's an investor or a lender, you need to make sure that 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 it's speaking to the points that they want to hear and that you're not just talking about your product or service because you're not selling to a client or, or a user of your product or service. You're actually selling to somebody who is looking to invest or lend to your business. So it's all about the business aspects. It's all about the profitability of your business, your business model, et cetera, which is very, very different to what you would do on a daily basis, which is speak to clients. Um, and, and those pitch decks that are really good are the ones that clearly show the fundamentals of a business um, and answer those kind of key questions that any type of funder would want to see. Um, so be short, snappy, um, and very, very clear about how you're, how you're presenting um, your business and that you're presenting it in the right way to the right audience. Um, number eight is investor video. Now this is um, something that is not necessary in all cases, but increasingly becoming commonplace. And, and in some cases, it is actually necessary. Um, so if you are going to be using a crowdfunding platform or an investor, angel investor network, um, many of those now require you to have a video. Um, and whether it's you talking to, to potential investors or creating some kind of um, you know, properly um, shot video or animation, either way, um, it's it's really useful to help you engage with um, with your audience. Um, and, and so make sure that when you're putting those things together, that you're not necessarily just reusing information and, and um, uh, videos that you generally use with your client base, um, because the topic is slightly different. Remember that you're when you're constructing a video, you're doing it to raise funding. And therefore you need to, once again, same as what you what we've said with the pitch with with a with a pitch deck, you need to make sure um, that you're that you're targeting it to the audience and that you're trying to convince the investors to put the money into your money into your business. So it has to be about the profitability of your business, not just how great a product that you that you have. Um, and don't just do a demo of the product because again that's not convincing. That doesn't tell me as an investor um, whether it's worth putting my money into your business and whether I'm going to get a return on my investment. It just tells me that you have a nice widget. Um, so make sure that, that you're targeting things in the right way. Um, 
last but not least is um, is 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 making sure that you reach out and and present to funders um, and that you create your network in a in a way that that is that is that is smart um, and and will increase your chances of success. So make sure that first of all that you're looking from funding from the right sources, um, and that means doing research. That means understanding the funders that you're that you're approaching. Um, you, understanding and trying to, to, to ascertain what it is they want to see um, when uh, investing or lending to you uh, as a business um, and make sure you meet those criteria. Uh, a lot of people try the kind of shotgun approach and, and just chuck as much um, stuff out there as possible and see what hits. Um, and sometimes you can you, you can get lucky, but actually those people that are more successful are, are the ones that that specifically target those types of funders that are most suitable for them uh, and, and, and spend the time curating and engaging with those types of invest, uh, investors or lenders. Um, so understand what the criteria is and what they're looking for and make sure that your business fits those criteria. Um, also leverage your own network first. Um, often when it comes to fundraising, getting the first investor on board is is often the hardest thing. Um, so make sure that you um, that you go and you tap up your own network, and if you can, try and get somebody in your network to start start the investment round. Once you've got a first investor, it makes life so much easier in terms of uh, in terms of uh, getting the next the next investors. And finally, be creative. Uh, investors and lenders see so many. Um, business plans, so many pitch decks on a on a on a daily, weekly, yearly basis, and so standing out from the crowd is is hugely important. Um, it's really so so try to try to do things which which make you stand out from the crowd. Whether it's your approach or how you put your how you put everything together, either way, it's you need to you need to think very very carefully about how you approach and and, and try and be unique. Um, so. Just remember that, you know, when it comes to getting funding, um, often entrepreneurs slip up because they go and approach people before they're ready. Um, and you have to remember when it comes to speaking to any type of funder, you often only get one chance to convince them to, to make somebody change their mind is really, really, really difficult. Um, so make sure that you do the best um, and be prepared. 